Meet Rio, Amelia, Phoebe and Alicia. We've been following them going about their daily lives as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. Let's check in with 10-year-old Alicia. Hi. Alicia has recently been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. So sometimes I have sharp stomach pains, I feel sick, and I have to go to the bathroom quite a lot. Today we're joining Alicia as she heads to the hospital. I'm getting my first dietitian appointment and I'm pretty nervous I said. Alicia is meeting paediatric dietitian Lauren McVeigh to talk about how the food she eats affects her IBD. Are you not hungry? Sometimes I feel hungry but if I eat then I feel like sick. It might well be because you're not actually eating, eating, well, eating enough. Yeah. I just want to see if we can get the calories in, whether that will then make, start making you feel better. So having something like a yogurt or a rice pudding or a custard um, with some fruit perhaps is probably going to be a little bit and more nutritional for you. I'm going to get you some samples of different nutritional drinks to try, which have got lots of energy in, but also protein and vitamins and minerals. Hopefully they'll be easier for you to take and won't make you feel too sick. OK, thank you very much. Bye-bye. We'll catch up with Alicia next time to see how she's getting on with her new diet. I'm really nervous excited about the new food um, drink samples that they're going to send to me. I'm not really sure what they taste like, but they told me that they've got all different flavours, so it's pretty exciting. Um, I'm not sure if they'll taste great or gross, but I hope, it will, but I hope they do taste great. Bye. Bye, Alicia! Meet Rio, Amelia, Phoebe and Alicia. We've been following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be regular hospital outpatients. Today, we're catching up with 10-year-old Rio. Hello. Rio has a prosthetic leg and he's mad about sport and loves athletics. I like sprinting, I like 100 metres. I want to be a Paralympian. To help achieve his ambitions, he trains at a local sports club. I come here most weeks doing the things that I love. I really enjoy seeing my friends and doing lots of activities like running around the track. He wears a special sports blade and today he's training with his brand new one. It's really fast and it gives you kind of a spring. You can see it's got flames on it. They look awesome! It's a really cool design because when I run, I'm on fire. Wow! And Rio is preparing for a big competition. I'm training for the Limb Power Junior Games. If you're missing a limb or um, something, you can take part in it. You meet lots of uh, new people there and make new friends and you do all kinds of different sports like running, cricket, football wheelchair basketball, sitting volleyball, and lots of other fun stuff. Like, it's going to be amazing. Rio has even been sent a good luck message from medal-winning Paralympian, Steph Reed. Hey, Rio. I hear you've got mm -hmm. some big races coming up soon, and so I thought I would get in touch and just say good luck and be fearless. So have an awesome time and let me know how it goes. See you soon. How cool was that? Amazing. We'll find out how you get on at the games next time. Catch you later, alligators. In a while, crocodile. <laughs> Meet Rio, Emilia, Phoebe and Alicia. We've been following them across this series as they let us know what it's like to be regular hospital outpatients. Let's catch up with eight-year-old Phoebe. Hi, it's me again. Phoebe had a liver transplant six years ago and she still has to take regular medication, but that doesn't stop her doing the things she loves, like playing with her friends. Hi! Hi! Everyone wash their hands. Phoebe has to be especially careful when it comes to hygiene. It's important we wash our hands so Phoebe doesn't get any germs off of her hands. Because mm. you might get germs um, and then you might get ill. Phoebe loves sport and she competes in the British Transplant Games. Sorry! The British Transplant <laughs> Games is for anybody who has had a transplant, even if you're a donor. She's entered the Games for the past six years. I really like taking part in because I like competing against all my friends and there's a good chance that I can win loads of medals. She's good at tennis and she's also really good at running. 
Phoebe doesn't let her condition hold her back. I have won medals in the past. I've got quite a few here. I won this one for badminton last year. I won this one for table tennis. I won this gold for running. I'm really excited for you to see me next time at the British Transplant Games. Bye! 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 Bye. <laughs> Meet Caden, Maisie, Baloo and Millie. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. Meet 12-year-old Baloo. Hey guys, it's Baloo again. Baloo has a condition called sickle cell anemia. This is where the body produces unusually shaped red blood cells which aren't very good at carrying oxygen. This causes problems such as pain, tiredness and blood clots. To make sure Baloo's blood is carrying enough oxygen, she has to have it regularly tested at hospital. This is Debbie. She's taken my bloods today. Hi. Hopefully she'll be giving me loads. <laughs> Debbie is going to collect a sample of Baloo's blood using a finger prick test. It's not painful, but it's OK, I mean, because I've been getting it, like, every day of my life, really, so it's kind of just a normal thing for me. And how's Baloo's finger doing, Debbie? 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yay! Well done, Baloo's finger. So we've got all them bloods off us today. I'm so proud of my finger. Look at my finger. <laughs> so cool. These blood samples will be sent to the lab to be tested. The doctors will then look at the results, and if there's anything that they don't like, then Baloo will be called in to speak <laughs> to the doctor. So now you know who's taken my blood, and now you know where I take my blood. So see you next time, guys, on... Operation Ouch. Meet Ruby, Hayden, Holly and Toller. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They've given us exclusive access to their lives as they undergo treatment. Let's catch up with our outpatient Hayden. Hello Hayden. Hello. Hayden has Marfan syndrome, which has led to his heart not working properly so he needs heart surgery. Go get it, Bust. Last time, we met Hayden and Buster the dog. Hayden was at home getting ready to go to hospital. But now it's nearly time for the big operation. The surgeon who will be doing the op has come to see Hayden, Mr Romana Dana Panini. We'll put you to sleep. Yeah. And then you don't know anything whatsoever. I'll probably forget where I even am. You probably will. The surgery will take around seven hours, but to cheer him through, a crowd has gathered outside. That's not for Hayden, silly. Oh, who's it for? The Queen. The Queen? Wow! More of that later. For now, Hayden's getting his own VIP treatment in Theatre 5. You may want to look away if you're squeamish, as you're about to see Hayden's heart. Ready? And here it is. How amazing is that? Hayden's operation is to fix his aorta. This is the main blood vessel leaving your heart, and it's the biggest vessel in your body. Because of his condition, the valve in Hayden's aorta is leaking. Here comes Hayden's heart again, so look away if you're squeamish. Mr. Dana Panini inserts some plastic tubing in an attempt to repair Hayden's aorta. If this fails, Hayden will need a mechanical implant to make his heart work properly. Remember I said the crowds are here for the Queen? Well, here she is! She's come to officially open this brand new Alder Hay Hospital. While there are royal goings on outside, inside Hayden is being treated like royalty himself. And there's some good news from the operating theatre. So the operation went very well. We managed to preserve the aortic valve very well, which gives him a better quality of life so he can play like any other kid. That's fantastic. Hayden may not have seen Her Majesty, but the next best thing to royalty has got to be us, surely. Hayden, how are you doing? And you've got your appetite back? Yes. How's dinner? Good. Is it? Amazing. You've just joined the Zipper Club, is that right? Yes. And hold on, who's this? This is Buster, my doggy. He's been waiting for me to come home. Well, you'll be home soon, Hayden. Listen, guys, it's been very nice, but I want to eat my tea. All right, Zon, we don't right. need telling twice. Very nice to see you, Hayden. Enjoy your sausages. What you want is patients that throw out their doctors. Exactly. That's good news. Find out how Hayden's recovery goes later in the series. Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu and Millie. 
We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. We're catching up with 11-year-old Maisie. Hello. She has celiac disease, which means she can't eat gluten. I have a hospital appointment with the dietitian. She's the person who tells me if I'm doing my gluten-free diet correctly. And I'm really hoping that she'll have my blood result. If it's good, then I should be able to eat oats. So that's super exciting. Fingers crossed. Maisie has regular tests to detect the levels of gluten antibodies in her blood. She needs her blood count to have gone down for her to be able to eat those oats. This was just after you were diagnosed. Yeah. And you were just under 32. Today it was just under 64, so it's going up. So okay. it means that there's some gluten sneaking in somewhere, basically. If you feel like you've stuck to it 100%, that's great, but there could be some contamination that we don't know about. Uh-oh, some pesky gluten has crept into Maisie's diet. If you get in a bit of the runs, have a sort of think about what have you eaten in the last 24 hours. Right. Keep a little diary if you need to. Keep a okay. little notepad. And it might be over time when we start to see more of a pattern. I found out that my results had gone up at quite a steep hill. So they were just under 64. So I can't eat oats, which I'm pretty disappointed about. Maisie's done well keeping an eye on her diet so far, but there's a little bit more work to do. See you later. Bye. Now it's time for our final visit to our ouch patients. Ruby, Hayden, Holly and Toller. We've been following them across the series as they undergo their treatment. First, let's catch up with Hayden. Hello, Hayden. Hello. Hayden has Marfan syndrome and last time he had an operation on his heart. Hayden's surgery went well and he's been recovering in hospital for three weeks. We have got some very, very good news that me and my mum can go home tomorrow. That's great! And Hayden can't wait to catch up with his canine companion, Buster. I've not seen him for three weeks. I've had his photo at the end of my bed. That has helped me. Just a few hours later and Hayden's heading home, where one very excited member of the family is waiting to greet him. <laughs> one happy boy and one happy dog. <laughs> Hayden will continue to have regular checkups until he's fully recovered from his surgery. Take care, Hayden. Bye. Bye. We've also been following Ruby, who has been undergoing treatment for leukemia, a cancer which affects her blood. Last time, we saw Ruby getting treated in hospital. But since she started her treatment, Ruby hasn't been able to do the one thing she really loves. Today I'm going swimming and this is my dry suit, so I can go in the water and not get wet. My because if my land gets wet, it gets infected, and I'm really excited. Ruby's treatment has been going well, and she only has a couple more weeks of chemotherapy left. Good luck with the rest of your treatment, Ruby. We hope you're all better soon. Bye. Bye. We'll catch up with Holly and Toller later. <laughs> Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu, and Millie. We've been following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. Today we're back with nine-year-old Millie. Hello. Millie has polyarticular arthritis, which means she experiences pain in her joints. <laughs> but it doesn't stop her playing with her friends. Charlie is a really important friend to me because she always supports me and helps me with my arthritis. To help Millie cope with the pain in her joints, she has to have weekly injections. When I'm ready, I say go. Go. You're being really brave, Millie. Let it go. And we're done. Good job, Mum. Yay! She is really brave having her injections every week because if I had to have it, I wouldn't be able to cope. Now the injection has eased Millie's pain for a while, she can do more dancing with Charlie. Bye! 